Hey everyone, this is Corey Little with Rockies Communications. Give me a few seconds here, we'll get started as soon as the Zoom populates. All right, again, this is Corey with Rockies Communications. Thank you all uh, for taking the time to be here today with Rockies owner and CEO, Dick Montfort and Executive Vice President and General Manager, Jeff Bredich. Before we start, just a quick reminder on how this works. If you have a question, please press the raise hand button at the bottom of the screen. When it's your turn, I will call on you and request that you unmute. Since we have a pretty big number of you on the call today, you'll be limited to one follow-up question. And I'll try and get to everyone with a hand raised if there's time. Um, with that said, I'll go ahead and turn it over to owner Dick Monfort. Dick. Thanks. Um, thank you uh, all for calling in. Hopefully uh, you and your families are all healthy and safe. Uh, we are here to discuss Nolan's trade to St. Louis. Uh, this brings closure to something that is uh, we have been dealing with for over a year. Nolan is an incredible player. He came up through our system. I'd like to think we had a part in the player he has become. Uh, for over a decade, Nolan Arenado was a Colorado Rocky. In 2019, we signed Nolan to what I would call a career contract, something we were committed to. Nine months later, Nolan asked us to look for a trade. In 2020 came COVID and the stark reality of a shortened season, one without fans. Uh, Nolan's desire to move on never wavered. With an option to move on at year end, the most cost efficient way to let it was to let it play out. That also was the lowest return and doing that also had some risks associated with it. We talked with several teams. Ultimately, we determined there was a deal to be made with St. Louis. We don't discuss financial details, but I can tell you what has been reported is not completely accurate. There are deferrals and the money is spread out, out over a, a number of years. In return, five players with a legitimate opportunity come our direction, players who we believe will help us. I am aware uh, this is not a popular decision, but I promise you it wasn't made with haste. I'm a fan first. I think you all know that. Our players are like family to me. We were blessed by Nolan and we all had a front row seat to watch this unbelievable player. Unfortunately, nothing lasts forever. Uh, I will always wish Nolan and his family the very best. Let me close with this. We have an extremely talented team. They are built to compete. It is time for them to take the next step. We are excited for our season ahead and look forward to the challenges. Um, and I guess we'll open it up to you, Corey, to, for questions. Great, thanks, Dick. We'll go to Thomas Harding, Rockies.com first. Thomas, go ahead. Good morning, guys. Thanks for talking to us. Um, I wanted to ask, I know there'll be a lot of questions about what went into this and the relationship and everything, but what I wanna ask is this, where are you guys right now? Is this the start of a rebuild like we've seen with other teams where they trade off some of their top players, their assets, and try to build for the future. Is this that at this point? And I'm opening it up to both of you, and I do have a follow-up. Take that, Dick. I think that, uh, Thomas, thanks for the question. Um, you know, I, I, I would say that there are, in this, in this industry, there are probably levels and different variations of, you know, a rebuild process. Um, this certainly is not a, a total tear down and rebuild like, um, you know, certain teams have chosen to, to undergo over time. Uh, I, I think if that were the case, uh, you know, certain, certain players uh, would have already been traded, right? Or we would have, uh, we would have made serious overtures to, to move certain players in an effort to completely tear down and start a complete rebuild. So, no, I, I don't think that we don't think that that this is uh, this is the case for uh, for our situation right now. Um, I think there are there are always parts of of your team and your organization and the group of talent that you have that you're looking to add to or you're looking to improve on. 
Um, but uh, we, we believe in, in, in so many of the players that we have, and, and there are such good parts of this major league team that uh, there are already established and already exist. So, um, you know, that's somewhat of a long answer to your, to your short question, but that's our feeling right now. Um, and to follow up of to, to follow up on that, I guess it's a little bit of a two-parter. Where does Trevor's story show up in the thought of maybe um, improving the club versus holding on? And can that decision be now or at the deadline? And I guess, and yeah, l l I'll just leave it at that, and I'll leave that to others after this. Well, Trevor, obviously, Trevor's uh, an elite has become an elite player. Um, and, uh, you know, his, his situation is, is separate from, um, from Nolan's situation as, yeah, as is the case with the rest of our players. Uh, you know, they, uh, we, we certainly um, cherish having Trevor as our shortstop. And it's very difficult uh, to answer your question directly, very difficult to predict what the coming months um, is, or, you know, what they're going to look like in terms of the deadline. In terms of this season in general, uh, we are going to try to make the season happen, right? But we do not know what the pandemic and what the virus is going to do and, and how things are going to work out. So it's it's somewhat difficult to, to predict because of a number of factors exactly how this is going to look um, for Trevor uh, in the near future and, and for other players in the future. So does he start the season with you? Can you say I, that right now? Yes, I think so. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We got Patrick Saunders with the Denver Post. Patrick, go ahead. Guys, thanks for for talking to us. Really appreciate. It. I know this is not a an easy time for you guys. Uh, for both of you, my basic question is this: uh, Was this primarily a financial consideration, as Dick as Dick uh, mentioned in his opening statements, or was it more that you had the sense that Nolan Arenado simply didn't want to be a Colorado Rocky? Anymore? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, a year ago, uh, you know, we uh, we tried to find out whether there was a fit for Nolan quietly. That was Nolan's and our hope, um, and it got out. But uh, and we, you know, we shut it down because there wasn't anything that was a fit. Um, you know, if I had my brothers, I would rather have Nolan Arenado, um, but. It, it was Nolan's choice. He, he wanted to move on. And, um, you know, I, I've speculated over the last year what, why, um, and I've talked to Nolan a lot about it over the last year, but the fact remains that I think he just felt it was time for him to, to, uh, try something else out. So, um, you know, that said, what do you do? Uh, I mentioned you can just wait and have him opt out at the end of the year and you get a draft choice or you can talk to some other teams and see if you can make a better deal. So um, although there's some a lot of financial ramifications in this, I think the fact of the matter is we honored what Nolan wanted to do and we made what we thought was the the, the best thing we could do at the time. And, uh, you know, as I also mentioned, this didn't just all of a sudden happen. Uh, this took a lot of work. And uh, um, so um, I think these are the results of that. And if I could follow up with Jeff, and I'm not sure you're going to want to answer this or not, but Nolan in various ways has told us the media his side of the story. And you know what those comments have been you have not to this point chosen to respond. Would you like to characterize your relationship with Nolan for us and for the Rockies fans? Well, I would say this, um, you know, Nolan and I have known each other for over a decade. Um, I've known his family for over a decade. Um, there have been, you know, so many interactions over that time you know, starting with when we just drafted him, um, spring training, years of spring training with with his his parents coming down, and his uh, you know his brother and his cousins and um, you know on into 
times at Tulsa and when he was a minor leaguer and, you know, I was a farm director. Um, and, and then as he became a big leaguer and as he became an elite big leaguer. Um, and, um, you know, I, I think that when you in this, in this chair and in, in, in this job, when you recommend um, that we sign him to a quarter of a billion dollar contract, um, that comes with an incredible amount of belief in that person. Um, you don't push for that sort of a commitment and that sort of a contract unless you believe in the person, you believe in the talent, you believe in the future of the organization with that player. Um, and, you know, but over time, sometimes relationships change. And this is not an easy, uh, necessarily an easy industry to, to be in. You know, people are competitive. Um, and, and human beings change over time, our feelings, um, what's important to us. Um, and, uh, you know, and sometimes there are, there are complications and, you know, and yeah, it's, it's, it's not always a straight line and it's not always simple and it's not always easy. Um, but I think my point is that at the base of all of this, this relationship was, uh, a strong belief that I've always had in Nolan um, ever since I, I first got to know him. Um, and so, you know, we wish him nothing but the best. Uh, we really do. I, we feel like he's, he's going to do a great job for St. Louis, um, you know, and, and we hope that he and his family are, you know, no different than we always have. Um, even though that there have been some bumpy times in the past, uh, we wish him the best. Thanks, Jeff. Go to Nick Groke with The Athletic next. Nick, go ahead. Uh, yeah, for uh, both of you or either of you, um, you know, you 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 sign him to a, an eight-year deal, and then and then nine months later, um, he's asking for a trade. For two two parts, what what was the instigating factor for him to want out so soon after signing a deal? And then from from your side, again, he was under contract. You didn't necessarily have to trade him. What was it that kicked you into agreeing to it? Um, to tr to what he wanted in the way of a trade. L let me take this. You know, I have anguished for uh, many sleepless nights wondering why, uh, why that happened. Um, you know, when, when we signed, uh, first of all, we, we agreed to uh, his last year of arbitration. Uh, um, he, they said they were going to come back and they wanted to do a long-term deal. Um, I don't know that Jeff or I, either one of us were sure if they were going to do that, but they did. Uh, I, I wouldn't sense that we pushed him to sign that. Um, I think it was fairly mutual. We were interested and he seemed very interested. So, you know, I, I've speculated personally on a lot of those things. Uh, you know, we had a bad, you know, we just come off two playoff years, 17 and 18. Um, we had a bad year in 19. Um, you know, uh, I, I've, I've reached back to everything. I think that in 17 and 18, Nolan felt, I would have felt if I was Nolan, that he didn't give, get enough love from, um, you know, from the people that decide who should be MVPs and this, that, and everything else. I, I don't know. I, I, I really don't know. And to be quite honest, in all our conversations with him, he never just said it was this or that or whatever. I just sort of uh, felt it out. So the other part of that is why do it now? As I mentioned, we had, you know, we basically had two choices. We had the choice of, waiting till the end of the year and letting him opt out. And that probably would have been the popular decision, uh, or at least I could cleanse my hands of that. Um, but the result is the same. And so uh, in dealing with this, we, we tried to find a way to, that we could uh, get the greatest return possible, uh, if that makes any sense. There were many teams that we talked to and there were many deals that made no sense. And to be quite honest, there were 
10 times over the last two weeks where I didn't think the St. Louis deal made any sense. But Jeff did an incredible job of pushing the talent. And, you know, I know none of us know these guys uh, real well, especially since the, you know, there was no minor league season last year. Uh, but our amateur scouts had, had seen these guys, um, some of them. And, you know, these, these are talented guys. And at the end of the day, do you want to take a draft pick at the end of the year if he would opt out? Or do you want to take your chance with five guys that sort of at least three or four of them fit in the same type of caliber that you would get from that draft choice? So, I mean, that that was the tep- decision. It was uh, – it was a difficult decision uh, the whole time, but that's what went into our thinking. And and just to clarify, so you he, did he tell you that he would definitely opt out at the end of the year, and that's and that was the the fear. He had told us he wanted to be traded, so our our assumption was that he would opt out. Yes. Thank you. We go to Pat Graham with the Associated Press. Pat, go ahead. Hey, thank you very much for taking the time. Uh, question for each of you, Jeff. I'm going to start with you. How hard was it to do this trail, knowing that do this trade, knowing that uh, you're going to be criticized no matter what? And uh, how hard is it to hear people just, I don't know, criticizing this deal right now? Uh, it, you know, I mean, it comes with the with the territory, Pat. Um, man, just it's a part of the job. You know, it's a public job. Uh, it's a public organization, right? I mean, that's part of the part of the great element of sport is that it's it's with the public, for the public, for our fans. It's a it's not a private venture um, in most respects. So, um, you know, it's uh, I, I as I've said before, I think in in interviews, I I try to stay off of, of social media as as much as possible as best I can. Um, but, um, you know, it, it just is, it is, it's part of the job. Thank you for that. And, and Dick, one question for you would be the, uh, the backlash from fans. I mean, it's, there's a lot of visual out there right now from fans. How do you, how do you handle that? And what's your message to them going forward? Um, my me- yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I actually see some of it, not on purpose, but I do see some of it. Um, you know, I mentioned I'm a fan and uh, I truly am. So I understand uh, how they feel. Uh, And to be quite honest, I would probably feel the same way. And maybe I do even feel the same way. Like I said, when we signed Nolan, it was in an attempt to keep Nolan here for the rest of his career, but things do change. So, uh, you know, I, I know um, maybe nobody on this call will believe this, but I truly in my heart believe that this is a very talented team that underperformed the last couple of years. And, you know, I'm not even going to count last year because it was um, it was a difficult year. But, you know, I think we underperformed. So I believe, uh, you know, we're we're shorter talent than we were a year ago, but we've got a lot of guys that to be quite honest, it's time to cut bait. And so uh, this could be the challenge that they need. This could be, they need to step up and fill in this void. And the other thing is these days come, whether, you know, whether it's free agency, whether it's an end of a career or whether whatever, these things happen in time. And uh, the organization needs to, you know, y'all have to step up. So um, we're going to, you know, we're going to face um, some issues with our fans and we'll deal with it. And, uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully we can get off and start playing well. And uh, in time, uh, um, the fans will uh, understand. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Go to Mark Kizzo with the Denver Post. Mark, go ahead. One for each of you. Uh, first to Dick, um, you mentioned COVID-19, the pandemic, and that certainly had a, a, a major impact on all businesses, yours included. You also have a, a major project you're working on at the, at the ballpark site in McGregor Square. 
to what extent have those financial realities impacted this decision with Nolan and it will impact um, decisions going forward with this baseball team? And you also said nothing's forever. Has the current reality made you think that maybe you won't own this team forever? You'd like that, wouldn't you? Uh, you know, I guess the, the, the main question is uh, McGregor square and, uh, and the Rockies, first of all, you know, the two are different entities. Um, I, they're the, there are four of the eight owners of the Rockies that have invested in McGregor square. There are nine other investors that have in, invested in McGregor square. It's a separate entity. Uh, they pay rent to the Rockies, and that rent is used to up, update the stadium so that we don't have to, so the Rockies don't have to take money out of, uh, out of their pocket to put new boilers in or, um, you know, paint the place or keep it up. It, it'll help us to the tune of about $120 million over a 30-year period, which allows us to spend more on our payroll. Um, and I think I, and, you know, like I said, they're, they're arm's length, they're separate They're Um, they have their own operation. I am an investor in that. Um, and so the season for the Rockies, yes, it was a, a tough season. Uh, I think we, uh, all teams, um, had, a had financial, you know, shortages last year but i agree with you that we're not the only business that had that the airlines the hotels the the restaurants all those things have uh, been challenged so uh, i don't think the decision to to do uh this trade with nolan uh yeah there are some financial ramifications uh going forward but i i think that you know this was something we started dealing with uh, before the pandemic and it, you know, and uh, as I mentioned, uh, Nolan's desire to, to move on didn't didn't change. And so I think we just continued the process that we had started a year ago. And uh, one for uh, Jeff, uh, as you've clearly stated, I mean, quarter billion dollars is more money than most of us can comprehend. And in pro sports, that's the ultimate sign of respect. Do you think Nolan Arenado would still be a Colorado, Colorado Rocky if you had a better personal relationship with him outside of the money and you had done a better job of building a winning team in the last couple of years? Well, Mark, I mean, I think you're asking me to speak for Nolan directly. Um, I'm asking to speak for you to speak for yourself, sir. Well, you, you asked me to, to interpret what Nolan um, – might think. And so uh, I don't ever try to speak for a player in terms of how he's going to feel about uh, a situation with a team, whether it's the team itself, whether it's a relationship with me or you know, Dick in this case, or a manager or teammates or anything like that. Um, you know, I have said, you know, it's been clear, like, it, and I said it earlier um, with an earlier question. Um, you know, the, the relationship wasn't always peaches and cream, right? There were some bumps uh, here and there, um, you know, but, and, and relationships change over time. Could I have uh, done a better job in certain areas? You betcha, absolutely. Uh, and I can always do a better job in, in, in certain areas of, of my job um, in this organization. I think that goes without saying, and I think that's, part of the human experience in this industry. Um, and I, I don't, you know, I take that to heart and I, I don't think I'm blind to that. Um, but I, I can't sit here and, and speak for how Nolan Arenado feels right now. Um, you know, and uh, I, I certainly try and like heck not to do that, uh, speak publicly for players. And I very, you know, really never have, have gotten in a public war of words um, or a public conversation um, with a player. Uh, and so 
try to keep that those things uh, private and out of respect to everybody involved. Uh, and building the, the, the winner. I mean, because he was clearly upset as well as you two were with, with losing 90 games. Uh, what responsibility do you take for that? Well, I take a ton of it, right? That's my job. Um, you know, I think if, uh, if you rewind, you know, Dick alluded to it, you know, we earlier, we, you know, we, you know, 15 and 16 are, are building towards what we feel like uh, our competitive playoff teams, uh, 17 and 18. Um, some of those feelings are realized and beliefs are realized with the playoffs and um, fully expected that, you know, we're, we would continue to take steps towards, uh, you know, even more playoff success. 19 uh, didn't work out. We had a, a, a fine first half in 2019 and we're, well, what, five or six games over. And then we really struggled in the second half and it didn't work out for us in the second half at all. Um, last year, yeah, like, you know, like everybody knows, right? Pandemic, there are complications. There were a lot of social issues, but, you know, every team in sports was um, interacting with that. And that was the reality for every team. So, uh, you know, we, we certainly jumped out of the gate last year and started real well and then struggled in the second half. Um, so that's a pattern that, that we would certainly like to change. Uh, but it, it hasn't just all been struggle all the time. There's been some really good play and, and, and good talent that's led to good, some good things. It just hasn't been as consistent, um, you know, as we've wanted over the last few years that have led us to the playoffs. Go to Michael Spencer with CBS4 next. Michael, go ahead. Um, I'll toss this out to, to either one of you. Have you guys talked to Charlie or Trevor, players who are on the roster and what has their reaction been to you guys since this move has been made, if anything? I'll take that first. I, I, yeah, we've talked not since the trade. I mean, the trade just happened. So, um, but we've, we've talked over time, you know, over the winter time, you, uh, you talk here and there, whether it's in person, uh, over the phone, over text, um, with and through agents, uh, all those things have happened uh, as they normally do in a, in a, in a normal off season. Uh, but there hasn't, you know, since since the actual trade happened and um, and to now, here we are in the Zoom, we, we have not spoken yet. Dick, as a follow-up, um, the last two years, and you kind of touched on this, but obviously the winning percentage is down. Um, some of the free agent signings haven't worked out. DJ leaves and becomes an MVP candidate in New York. So what gives you that confidence that this team is is headed in the right direction and that the people in charge are, are the right people to get this team. Yeah. You know, I think, uh, in, in hindsight, uh, you know, losing DJ was a big deal and, um, you know, in hindsight, you know, I wish we could have figured out a way, uh, to keep DJ and, you know, DJ is a great guy and, and somebody that always played with a chip on his shoulder and, uh, you know, the Cubs paid for that every time they played against uh, against us. So in hindsight, yeah, that we we wish that uh, we could re redo that. Um, the confidence in 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 me is that, you know, for. 20 some however many years we've been when we've been doing this, uh, one of our goals in life was always to um, to grow enough pitchers to where we could, uh, you know, we could compete without having to bring somebody in here. It is different as we all know, pitching at Coors Field, it takes a certain toughness to do that. Uh, it's, it's not only, uh, it's not only a hitter's park, but it's, uh, you know, we're playing at an altitude that these guys don't live at all year. So, my biggest uh, belief is that we have built uh, pitching uh, and we've done it internally. Uh, we've got um, a lot of talented pitchers. I think last year, quality start wise, uh, we, we led the league. Uh, I could be wrong on that, but I, I think uh, we've got 
very good starters. I think that, you know, had Scotty Oberg uh, not been uh, hurt last year, I think that would have helped us a lot in the bullpen. Uh, Jeff has worked uh, very hard at getting young arms uh, and not having to go out to the free agency market, which has not been has not treated as well on relief pitchers. So I, I think that the pitching is really a a core that we've never had in our history. And I know that in our uh, in our minor leagues, we have some more guys coming. Um, so I think that's a real positive. I think if anything, over the last two years where where we were hurting was, you know, offensively and some of that may go back to DJ. But the fact is, we have a lot of kids that uh, we've developed that we believe in. And if they offensively, if we offensively can get to where we should be, I, I, I truly believe we'll have a good year. Now, New Lowe's and Nolan doesn't help our offense any. I understand that. But I, I just feel that uh, we, we have the, the nucleus of players that can, uh, um, that can get us to where we need to be. Go to Mike Feinstein or Mark Feinstein with MLB.com. Mark, go ahead. Uh, Jeff, I guess looking looking ahead, you talked about not knowing what was going to happen with Trevor. And just in general, when you're looking at free agency, do you worry about sort of how potential free agents might look at this situation that, you know, you sign Nolan, one of your own guys, to this long-term deal, and then within such a short period of time, this all disintegrated to this point and just the way that, either your own players like Trevor or outside players may view the organization and how this all went down. Hi, Mark. Um, yeah, I, you know, we, it's an individual sort of thing. I, I think to, to the question that you're asking, right. And, and, um, you know, that's where conversations come in and, um, you know, you, you specifically asked about free agents, but that's where conversations with agents and conversations a lot of time with uh, the players themselves, you know, that and we try to do that. And, um, you know, before there's, if there's a, a true in, interest in a situation, um, you know, that's where you, you have an opportunity to try to explain the vision um, and explain the reality that goes along with that vision um, and explain the organization and what the organization's about. So, uh, you know, it's a, it, but that's an individual thing that, that we take seriously and I take seriously in terms of, um, you know, the, the conversations that we have with free agents, if they have interest in our, in our, in our work. Thank you. Kyle Glazer with Baseball America. Kyle, go ahead. Hey, Jeff, what specifically was it about this five package of players that appealed to you and ultimately made you pull the trigger on this deal? Well, um, St. Louis has got some, you know, talented players in their system. And so, um, you know, I, I think that the unfortunate lack of, of minor league baseball this past year, uh, you know, does create complication when you're when you're looking for updated information right now the most recent information the most recent data the most recent scouting reports um you know it's it, it's a little bit more of a challenge right now just because uh, of the pandemic and how it's affected our industry as a whole um but when you go back and you look at you know some of these guys um and their history and, and the way that we evaluated them when they were amateurs um there was a lot of positive thought about all these guys. Um, certainly Austin Gomber has major league experience and he's got major league performance um, that, you know, warranted serious consideration. And, and we look forward to really look forward. I talked to him last night. We look forward to having him, um, you know, be a part of our major league team. And we feel like it's a great opportunity for him and he can add a lot um, in whatever role he ends up helping us. Uh, in terms of the, the minor league guys, you know, Montero, uh, strong corner bat, power, uh, 22 years old, um, a lot of upside, right? Interrupted development, 
uh, because of last year. Uh, Mateo Gill, Tony Losey, uh, Jake Summers, you know, all those guys were recently drafted within the last uh, two to three years. And, uh, and so we had a lot of amateur looks at them. Um, they're, you know, they've had limited professional experience because of, of the realities of 2020. Um, but, uh, you know, we felt really positive uh, going back to their amateur days about who they were, how they competed, what they were about, and, and obviously their upside and their potential to become quality major leaguers. To follow up, was there one player in particular whose inclusion really pushed it over the finish line? Uh, no. No, I think in this case, it was a combination of players. Thank you. Sean Keeler of the Denver Post. Sean, go ahead. Thanks for the time, gentlemen. A question for Jeff on a follow-up for Dick, if I could. Uh, Jeff, first to you, there have been published and unpublished anonymous reports of former players questioning the culture, questioning the commitment to winning, questioning a lot of commitments, period, from the organization, from a baseball, and from, from, a, from a financial standpoint. You've addressed some of this today and some of the realities that everybody faces. Jeff, I'm just curious, knowing we can't name names of people who have said things, but when people say to you, this is a stepping stone clubhouse and a stepping stone organization, and I've got to go somewhere else to win, what do you say to players who say that within themselves and to other former players? Um, it's, it's, uh, it's difficult to, um, you know, to directly address, um, as, as you just said, anonymous, um, and somewhat generalized, uh, reports about this, but, uh, you know, look, I, this, uh, this is a, uh, an organization that has recently, you know, tasted the success of playoffs. Did we get as far in those playoffs? in 17 and 18 as we wanted to, um, no. You know, we certainly strive for, um, for World Series participation. And, uh, you know, but, you know, it is a, it is a challenge that, that I think a lot of teams face, whether it's in this industry or other sports industries. Um, you know, being you know, World Series or high level playoff competitive every single year, year in and year out, um, it is the goal of the organization. It's a goal of the fans. So many of our fans want the same thing. Uh, it's a goal of the players, um, you know, making it a, a reality year in and year out, year after year after year is, is, is more complicated and more nuanced. And so uh, I, I guess that's the best answer that I can give you right now to that question. Thank you, uh, Dick. Dick, you mentioned being a fan and having it feeling hurting you too, as it does a lot of people here over the last few days, what would you say and what have you said to fans who are just pouring their hearts out because they care and what can you show them to show the investment that you guys care too? You know, I, I think first of all, um, the fact is, you know, we, we did sign Nolan. We spent, I think we put the highest contract ever that we'd done out to Nolan. So, I mean, I think that's an indication we care. I think it's an indication that at that point in time, we felt that we were close enough that this is not a guy uh, we we wanted to lose. You know, if you remember, if we wouldn't have done that in 19, he would have been a free agent at the end of 19. Now, who knows, we might have signed him then or we might not have, but, you know, we made the commitment. We made the commitment early uh, to sign him. So, uh, and we've made that commitment to other people. We've made that commitment to Charlie Blackman. Uh, you know, we made that commitment to Herman Marquez. Uh, so, I mean, we try, we do everything in our power to keep this team as, uh, you know, as competitive as possible. We know that we're not going to ever, uh, get out there and and go after Garrett Cole or, or some of the really top line um, free agents because, you know, we're, we're in a, a grouping, a mid-market team where we just uh, can't take that, that risk, which means at times we have to 
to assign sort of the next level down. Um, so I, I, the, you know, the fact that uh, Nolan isn't going to be here, I, I we can't make up for that. Uh, the only way we really can make up for that is our young players um, that come along. You know, when when Troy left, uh, well, you know, that that was another another tough day, another tough period of time for this organization. And, you know, fortunately, uh, Trevor Story uh, came in the next year and and played incredible. And he has become this star player that he is now. And, you know, so hopefully that next star will come out of having an opportunity uh, to play third base or to play second base and move Ryan McMahon over there or what, however it all works out. So, you know, we've just got to continue to uh, – bring uh, gifted players to the major leagues. And, you know, and as we try to do, we try to hold on to them for as long as we can. Thank you. Go to Tracy Ringlesby. Tracy, go ahead. Jeff, do you look at uh, McMahon or Fuentes as being the guy to step in at third base and play that position? Well, there's certainly you know, they are certainly right at the top of the list. Um, I think you can add, you know, in terms of guys that are already on the roster, uh, you can add Brendan Rodgers to that. I, you know, one of the things in our development process that we do is we try to make sure that all of our infielders get as much time at different, you know, all the, uh, as many different infield spots as possible. Uh, and it's to prepare them for uh, opportunity at the major league level that is tough to predict. And so their readiness is key. And, and we do have guys already on the roster that we feel like are well positioned to, to take advantage of this opportunity. Um, there are other players uh, off the roster in the organization that, that certainly will garner consideration. Um, you know, and, and I think Dick mentioned that, right? When we, we look back at Matt Holiday and, and we, you know, we traded him, I think it was after the 08 season, um, you know, and, and that he, he left and, and Willie Tavares left and it, and it provided an opportunity for players like Dexter Fowler and Seth Smith and Ryan Spielborgs to take the next step in their careers. Um, you know, Dick mentioned when we, we traded Troy, um, you know, we, I think we were fortunate at that time that, that Trevor Story was um, positioned well to take advantage of that. You know, he had already done certain things at the AAA level at a high level and uh, we didn't know that he was going to, you know, shoot out of the gate like he did and uh, at the major league level right away, right? I mean, that's, a, that's another thing that's, that's difficult to necessarily predict. And it's really difficult to do what he did at that time, um, step into the big leagues and, and really not miss a beat at all um, or str struggle at all. Um, you know, and so now there's an opportunity for other kids and other guys to take that next step in their career. And, um, you know, we're confident that that we have talented guys and, and it's, you know, now it's up, up to them to, to grab hold of the opportunity and run with it. Mark Carrod from The Athletic. Go ahead, Mark. Hey, this one's for Jeff. I, you know, I realize like it, it's hard to speak with chatter. So I just thought I'd lay out a couple of facts here. The team hasn't won the division. Um, you've misread the true talent uh, the last two years of your team. Now, the best player of baseball, who you lavished a giant extension upon, is no longer playing for your team. So, how is there any other way to see that uh, as anything but an organizational failure at this point? Sorry, Mark, you, you cut out in the middle there. Um, yeah, I, yeah, like, look, you know, Nolan Arenado is no longer playing for you. And there are a lot of reasons for that. But at the end of the day, he's no longer playing for your team. So is there any other way to see that as anything but an organizational failure? Because he's no longer there. And as you guys have said, he's a great player. So is that on the organization? And if so, what insights can you take? Because that seems like a major, major problem. Yeah, look, I mean, if, 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 we're look, if we're looking to pass blame, I mean, you can blame me, right? I, 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 it's the job of the GM to 
uh, create a team that uh, that competes and wins uh, as much as, as humanly possible. Um, you know, but I, I think the, the word human there is, is an important one. Um, you know, I, there are there are relationships in our human existence that uh, do last forever. Um, but we are human beings in a business where sometimes relationships don't last forever and commitments don't last forever. And you know, it's not just endemic to this particular sport, baseball, it's, it's all over sports um, where, where sometimes it's best for, you know, in this case, no one's, you know, desired to move and, um, and be with a different organization. And, and so we, you know, we honored that. We tried to honor that and listen to him, um, you know, but, you know, if, if, if you're looking to, to parse out blame, I mean, you can throw, throw the blame right on me. That's, that's part of the role. That's part of the job. Okay, and, and just to follow up then, like, is, is this a one-off case of a relationship gone soured with, with a disgruntled player? Or is this an indication of your leadership and how you treat people? Because this club has traded people before. And then also, um, you know, you guys haven't won a division. And the last two years, you thought the team was at a certain talent level, and it wasn't. So, you know, could you speak to those points? Um, I, I don't, I don't know how to call it a one-off or I would call it a one-off, um, necessarily. Um, you know, I, but I, I, I do take, um, great responsibility in, in trying to make sure that we are as, uh, competitive as we can possibly be, um, with the uh, resources that we have and, um, does every, you know, decision, that that comes in every season or across seasons work out no uh some, you take some risks at times and um you know you think that certain things are going to work out and you have a vision as to how those things might go and and sometimes they do work out and they do work out great sometimes they work out better than you expect uh and sometimes it's the exact opposite and um you know and i think that's uh, that's part of the human existence in this in this sport as well, um, but uh, I would say that you know without risk, if you don't take risk, um, you know I think you're limiting your reward at the end. And so, um, you know, I mean, I we just try to make the best decisions that we possibly can collectively and take the best risks that we possibly can collectively um, within the the parameters that that we have in the organization. Thank you. All right, we have time for a couple more here. I apologize if we can't get to, to everybody. We'll go to Ed Henderson with KOA. Ed, go ahead. Hey, guys, good morning. Thanks for your time. I wanted to ask, we, we all know, guys, that there's still a significant number of players out there on the free agent market. Does the Is it possible that some of the financial relief that come, came from this transaction could result in you potentially considering looking at some of those free agents um, as, as a potential addition to the, uh, to the team. And I do have a follow-up. So Jeff, that's for you. Yeah. And, uh, I would say that there are, there are certainly a lot of agents that have, uh, checked in, uh, since the, the news broke last week. So, um, you know, the, the, there are going to be discussions with agents, um, in the coming days, I'm sure in the coming weeks. Um, now that we know that, you know, spring training is going to start on the 17th of February, uh, there is some maybe more urgency uh, than there has been over the past few months. Um, but uh, where those, you know, where those conversations end up uh, remains to be seen. We'll, we'll just kind of take it case by case. And see if there's a fit, uh, weigh that out against the, the opportunity cost that, uh, you know, that would relate to some of the players we already have on the roster or the, in the organization. And Jeff, the follow-up, um, the, the five guys that are coming from the Cardinals, uh, have all the medicals been completed on them? And, uh, and, a, and a, a quick question about Gomber, if I may. Um, I wanted to ask you at this point, I know it's very early, but do you, do you see him as a guy that could challenge potentially for a rotation spot? Or, or if you had to make a guess right now, would you see him in the bullpen? Yeah, the medicals are clear. That's all part of the, um, you know, the process that, that needs to go on prior to something becoming finalized. So that's all done. Um, 
I would say we're going to get to know Austin um, as best we can here and as quickly as we can. Uh, I think he's, you know, I speaking to him last night, he's going to certainly prepare himself as a starter here coming into spring training. Um, but there's, you know, there's a lot of conversation and, and relationship building, you know, especially with, with he and our, our pitching coaches and, and buddy. Um, and we'll, we'll just take some time to evaluate all of that uh, in terms of his role before we make a final decision. Thanks, Jeff. Go to Jacob Toby with nine news. Jacob, go ahead. Yeah, um, this one's for Jeff. Jeff, I, I think a lot of the time when these big trades happen, fan bases and media members look to pinpoint like a blue chip guy coming back to, to sort of look forward to. Do you see someone, one of the five in, in this package, or is it more just you're hoping for, for a grouping of them to, to, to come up and, and sort of, you know, um, make, a, make an impact? Yeah, I would, I would say they all have a, uh, you know, Gomber obviously has already you know, been at the major league level and, and established himself in certain ways and performance wise at the major league level. So I think his so far, I mean, there's a lot of upside there too, right? Um, but so far his, his track record speaks for itself. Uh, the other guys we feel like have, you know, the four, four others have a legitimate chance to um, to impact us at the major league level, they're just, they're young players still. And so um, with interrupted developments and because of, of the lack of a 2020 minor league season. And so we, um, you know, we, we feel really good about collectively their opportunity to, um, to hit our major leagues, uh, you know, hit the major leagues with us at some point here. It's tough to know the timeline uh, and, and it's tough to see, exactly where and how minor league baseball is going to be played uh, even moving forward here. So I think we have to reserve some of those, um, you know, comments and, and looks until uh, their development process starts up again. Okay. Time for a couple more. Drew Creaseman, go ahead, please. All right. Thanks guys for taking the time. I, I was going to ask this of both of you, but I feel like it was more or less asked of Jeff already. So Dick, I just wanted to ask, you know, you had mentioned, uh, the DJ LeMayhew situation. I remember at the uh, end of season gathering we all had in 2019, you had talked about some other things at the deadline, didn't get into details. And I was just wondering if you could elaborate on your role in making those kinds of baseball decisions and if it's evolved at all over the last couple of years. As some of these things you've admitted, like you said, I, I wish we could have done that differently. If there's Anything that that's changed or evolved, and especially now after this Nolan thing about your role in terms of making baseball decisions. Yeah, I, I hope not. Uh, you know, I um, I'm a fan, so I, you know, I communicate with Jeff a lot. Uh, we talk about different players. Uh, you know, I'm a homer. I love all all the the players that uh, come up through our system. So I'm always. Uh, you know, I always hate to, to get rid of any of them. Um, but no, I, I don't think so. And, you know, the DJ, uh, that, that comment was more just looking backwards. You know, uh, I know that, uh, you know, DJ wanted to stay a Rocky, um, you know, his, his agent said that, um, you know, at the time he was looking for a long-term deal. And I remember, uh, uh, Steinbrenner, asked me at a meeting, he said, uh, uh, what do you got on DJ LeMay? And I said, he's a great player and a great guy. And I said, I see that you're going to use him as a utility guy and play him every once in a while. I said, that ain't going to fly with DJ. So, um, you know, I, I was looking that that more in retrospect. So, um, but no, I, I, I don't really get involved. Jeff and I talk a lot. Uh, I, you know, I, uh, you know, I, I know I go to every game here, so it seems like all the time I'm telling Jeff, well, I know he hits well here, but I, I try not to get in the, uh, in the decision process. The Nolan deal was a little different, um, uh, because, uh, you know, it was a large contract. Uh, it was, uh, it was, you know, it, it, it took me, um, sort of trying to figure out with Jeff money wise, you know, this deal started off at, you know, just 
basically that every team thought we were trying to dump him and that was not the case. And so uh, when you got a combination of, of money and uh, players, you know, it, it took a little coordination, but no, I try, I try not to, to get involved in that. Thank you. We have time for two more. Woody Page with the Gazette. Go ahead. Nick, uh, based on uh, the performance of your general manager prior to the couple of years you were in the playoffs and since then, did you decide or think about deciding whether or not he should be fired? considering the acquisitions of free agents here, those relief pitchers that you obtained years ago for $105 million, the fact that your minor league system is considered among all experts of baseball, even though they're in the media, to be one of the worst three in baseball draft and development team, and his relationship with not only Nolan, but with other players, did you consider firing him? And why didn't you? And also, why haven't you considered firing yourself? You're the owner of the team as the president of the team and bringing in an experienced uh, baseball uh, executive, which has never been done here in the history of the Rockies where a former general manager or a former vice president of a franchise has been brought in. That's my question. No follow up. Uh, did you say no, no uh, general managers been ever been brought from the outside? That's, that's correct. As a general manager here or executive. Like Dan O'Dowd? He was not a general manager before he came. Oh, I got you. Okay. Um, so the answer to all those are no. Um, you know, I, I like to, uh, I, I look at the same publications about uh, um, all the um, minor league uh, teams. And, uh, you know, I, I Trevor Story was never in the top 100. Charlie Blackman was never in the top 100. You know, one of our issues in Colorado, to be quite honest, is we really don't, uh, you know, for whatever reason, maybe it's because, uh, they're not going to rank pitchers or uh, or because they know they're going to have to pitch her. I don't know. I don't think uh, – so I, I've, I've been taught over time to not pay attention to that. I see our farm system. I see the, the what we go through to draft players. I see our development people. I go to all our minor league teams. I see the work and effort that we put into all of this. Um, so I, I guess if I can, I'll, I'll disagree with uh, some of those comments. But no, I, I have not thought about firing Jeff. I have thought about firing myself, but I have not thought of, about firing Jeff. All right, we'll go to Vic Lombardi with the last question. I apologize for everyone that uh, I wasn't able to get to, but Vic, go ahead. Hey, guys, I think we all knew the, the trade would become inevitable. I think what Rockies fans and most of us, when we found out that you were sending all that money to St. Louis, does it make sense if you knew no one would opt out to keep them for six more months and save that money? I mean, can you explain the business side of that? Yeah, I, I thought I did, but I'll go over it again. Yeah, I mean – uh, if, if we had played it out, let Nolan opt out, we would have paid Nolan 35 million this year and we would have got one draft pick at the end of the year. And it, I, I, Jeff can tell you what number somewhere in the thirties, I, I would guess. So that's what we would have got. Uh, so what we, what we ended up doing was we deferred some money. We paid him some money over time and we were able to pick up five players. And we felt, you know, r relatively comfortable that four of those five players would have been sort of the type of guy that we might have got with, you know, with that one pick. So it was, you know, it was that was the decision, if that makes any sense. All right, that's all the time we have. Again, apologize for anyone I wasn't able to get to. 
Jeff and Dick, thank you so much for taking the time. And thank you, everyone, for hopping on. Have a great day.